Welcome to Tarun IAS. Uh, you see the terms like El Nino, La Nina, Southern Oxidation, then Walker Circulation. Whenever you read any article related to geography or environment, you come across these terms. Uh, sometimes these terms become very confusing. In this lesson, what we will do, we will not only learn what are the meanings of these terms, but also how these terms are related to each other. Why when we read some article related to El Nino, the terms like Southern Oxidation or Enso or Walker Circulation also comes into picture. So after this particular lesson, you will never feel confused about these terms and the links between these terms. Further, in this particular class, we will uh, understand the concept of El Nino in further depth. We will see how it is caused, how it is specially uh, related to Indian monsoon, then what are its other effects in other parts of the world. After this particular class, we will practice some questions from prelims as well as from the mains examination. Again, whatever we are discussing here, everything will be provided to you in printer friendly PDFs. For that, you can contact Tarun IS uh, office. So let's start this particular class. First of all, why? Why we are studying about El Nino uh, in this particular class? So what is happening? Uh, according to World Meteorological Organization, last year the El Nino phenomena has again started. It, it again showing its appearance after many years, after the La Nina phenomena. Because of this El Nino phenomena, in the southern parts of Africa, some countries are facing droughts. They are not receiving any rain. So this has caused, you know, food related problems uh, there in these countries. And the presidents or the prime ministers of these countries are asking uh, the world for assistance uh, so that they can provide the food and distribute it among the population. So this is the reason. Many countries in southern Africa like Malawi, Zambia and Zimbabwe are facing drought and consequent food shortages because of El Nino phenomena which has started uh, in the later months of the last year. Now we will see what is El Nino and, uh, and this particular topic in detail. Uh, to learn about El Nino, we, we should have a clear picture of Pacific Ocean and the surrounding areas in our mind. You see this is Pacific Ocean. On the eastern side of this particular ocean, we have North America and South America. And on the western side of this ocean, we have Southeast Asian countries and Australia. We are more concerned about this particular region, the tropical part of the Pacific Ocean. First of all, we see uh, when there is no El Nino or La Nina phenomena, what are the normal uh, geographical conditions in this particular part of the Pacific Ocean? You see, uh, this is the eastern part of the Pacific Ocean. Here, under normal circumstances, we can see the presence of a cold current. Under normal conditions, in the eastern part of the Pacific Ocean, there is a cold current. Its name is cold, cold Peru current or Humboldt current. So, in under normal circumstances, in eastern part of the Pacific Ocean, a current is flowing along the this South American continent. This is called cold Peru current or Humboldt current. This current flows like this. Now, you know this particular region, the tropical area, these are the warmest part of the earth. So as soon, uh, as, soon as it approaches this particular region because of the increase in temperature, this cold current will, lose, will start losing its characteristics and will become slowly it will convert to a warm current. So this is a cold current, this starts as a cold current, slowly when it approaches the tropical regions, it becomes a warm current. Now you know what happens in this particular part of the earth, that air from the subtropical higher pressure belts, they approach the equatorial region. So what happens in this particular region, in the atmosphere, the winds are generally flowing like this. 
like this. So when they converge near the equator, they almost become an easterly flow. So in this region, we see there is a cold current which slowly moving upwards towards the equator. In terms of atmosphere, winds are blowing from east to west. So this is uh, these winds are called easterly trade winds. Why these uh, winds are happening? This is because of the uh, occurrence of the uh, situation of the pressure beds on the uh, surface of the earth. So this is the general, uh, these are the general conditions when there is no El Nino or La Nina phenomena. Now what happens, this, this uh, wind which is moving towards the west, it is causing this water, the water in the, uh, this tropical region near the equator in the central Pacific Ocean to move towards the west. So this way this water is moving towards this particular region and accumulating here. Now this water is warm. Here cold water is coming you know, and supplying uh, cold water in this particular region. This cold current is providing cold water in this particular region. So you can see that uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, in relation to these two places here the temperature of the water is more than this particular region. So we can say that the, hair, uh, the air when comes into this warmer temperature will have comparatively uh, more temperature. So here high temperature is there, here we have low temperature. This is of water. Now if the temperature of the water is more the air while coming into contact with this warmer water it will get heat and it will become warmer and it will move it will start moving towards the atmosphere so in this case there will be gap there will be less volume of air here and we can say that there is low pressure in the atmosphere so uh, let's make these things uh, again clear so we see that there is a cold current so here the temperature of the water is less so less temperature here in this part the temperature of the water is high because the temperature of the water is more the temperature of the air will also uh, be more air will rise upwards so here there would be less pressure here the air is rising this air is coming from this particular side here because there are colder conditions because of the cold current here the temperature of the water is less so less temperature of the water but the pressure of the air would be more because it is not absorbing more heat from this particular water so high pressure the pressure is high here there is low pressure air is moving from this direction towards this direction when this air while crossing this particular ocean it absorbs a lot of moisture when reaching here because of high temperature conditions of the water this air will become warm and start rising upwards after when moist air rises we know there are lots of cloud formation and rain so you see under normal circumstances there is rain in these particular areas so what are these areas northern past parts of northern and eastern part of the australia southeast asia eastern asia so in this this particular region will receive rainfall under normal conditions now when this air rises it starts expanding in different directions now when this particular branch it come back and again subsides here to fill the void because there was high pressure air was moving uh, from here in this particular direction so there must be some void to fill that void the air is again coming from the upward so this way this complete cycle rotates this particular circulation is called walker circulation so what is walker circulation air rising in this particular portion splitting apart in the high in the atmosphere again coming back joining this part and again completing this circle so this is called walker circulation so you see under normal circumstances 
here the rain is in this part because the air is rising here there is no rain in the eastern pacific ocean or we can say that in the northern or north eastern or oh sorry northwestern part of the uh, south american continent so there is no rain because the air is subsiding also temperature is low in comparison to this area so this is the normal condition when there is no el nino or la nina event cold current here this cold current is called humboldt or cold peru current a warm ocean current is flowing in this particular direction the reason for this particular current is the easterly winds are converging and moving in this particular direction they are bringing this water towards the east sorry towards the west now here the warm water is accumulating air coming in contact with warm water uh, is uh, raising its temperature becoming warm rising in the upward direction here there would be cloud formation rain in northern and uh, eastern part of the australia southeast asia eastern asian countries air will subs air is subsiding here there is no rain in the uh, northern or northwestern parts of the south american continent this is the normal condition now what happens during el nino or what is actually el nino what happens after a period of 3 to 7 years scientists notice that there is sudden upwelling of warm water in the central to this eastern part of the pacific ocean so here in this particular region suddenly the warm water starts appearing now the what this warm water does it actually replaces this particular cold current here this cold current you know starts residing earlier it used to goes like this but now it is limiting itself to say up to this region up to this region and slowly it disappears and this particular area it keeps on increasing so this area like this so this happens during el nino years during el nino what happens in the central and eastern part of the pacific ocean there is sudden upwelling of the warm water it spreads in the eastward direction here it replaces this cold water and this entire region this entire the water of this entire region becomes warmer now suppose under normal conditions here because of this cold water under normal condition the temperature would be around 25 degrees and here the temperature would be around 28 degrees now what happens during el nino years this 25 degree becomes say around 30 degrees now you see the conditions have totally reversed here the temperature of the water is now less in comparison to this so what will happen here there is warmer temperature here the air will become warmer it will rises up in the atmosphere moves spreads out in different direction one branch spreads out like this somewhere it has to subside so it subsides like this here again to fill the void because from here the air is moving upwards the, the this air starts moving in this particular direction so you see the total con the whole condition of the water as well as in the atmosphere have reversed during the el nino phenomena earlier there is warm water this side now the warm water is along the this side now you can guess where the rain will occur under el nino condition here the air is subsiding when air is subsiding there is no rain so uh, there would be drought in uh, southeastern nations eastern uh, countries and northern and eastern part of the australia during el nino years and there will be so much of rain in the northern and northwestern part of the south america during el nino years secondly you see there would be no cold water here cold water is known to attract fish because it has lots of nutrients when there is el nino there is only warm water so there will be less fish along the coast of peru which is a south american country along this side so this is el nino condition 
Now, uh, so if we have to define what is El Nino, so simply El Nino is a phenomena which occurs after a gap of say 3 to 7 years and it is associated with occurrence of warm water in the central to eastern part of the Pacific Ocean. Which, which part of the Pacific Ocean? In the tropical region, which is in tropical region, not this part or this that part, but the part which lies in the tropical regions near the equator. So, this is El Nino. And what is La Nina? La Nina is nothing but strengthening of the normal conditions. That is, there is cold water here because of the cold current. It further intensifies. So, there is region of more cold water here. Due to this, you know, the wind is again blowing towards this side. It is carrying away all this water. This water is accumulating this side. This whole region is the warmest areas of the earth. Because of this warm temperature, air will rise. Again, it will split here. One branch will come back. It will subside here. So, it looks like the normal condition, but it is actually the strengthening of the normal condition. So, what is La Nina? There will be more pronounced upwelling of the cold water in the eastern part of the Pacific Ocean. The, there, this rain in this particular part because the air is rising would be much more than the under the normal conditions. So, La Nina is the strengthening of the normal condition. So, we can say that La Nina is a phenomenon which again occurs in 3 to 5 years and it is associated with more uh, accumulation of the colder water along the uh, northern and northwestern parts of the South America. It intensifies the vocal circulation causing more rains in the northern and eastern part of the Australia and southeast Asian nations and uh, less rain in the south uh, in the north and northwestern parts of the South America. So, here uh, if you understand the concept you can make your own definitions. So, I hope at least diagrammatically you have no problem in understanding what is the difference between El Nino, La Nina and Walker circulation. This complete circulation is called Walker circulation because of the scientists who might have discovered this particular phenomena. Then, uh, so uh, this was the difference between El Nino, La Nino and Walker circulation. Uh, still southern oscillation is left. We will understand that phenomena with, a, with some particular diagram uh, ahead. So, I think up to this particular thing these concepts are clear to you. So, let us move on. So, uh, we have seen that what is El Nino, uh, the difference between El Nino and La Nina. El Nino is an abnormal warming of the water which is at least 0 0.5 degrees more than the usual. In the central and eastern tropical Pacific Ocean, the word tropical is very important here. It occurs 2 to 7 years. In case of a strong El Nino, this particular temperature, this particular temperature can reach up to 3 degrees as well. And El Nino here creates a mini miniature global warming across the globe because of increase in temperature in such a big ocean, the biggest ocean of the earth. And El Nino phenomena usually has higher influence on the global climate during the second year of its development. See, these are the statements which you will never find in any textbook. These are the statements which, which we have accumulated in the course of three to four years through different articles. So, these are the statements which are actually used by UPSC while creating the question especially in prelims. So, direct this particular line can be you know can be asked as one of the statements in the MCQs. So, this way we enrich our notes. We keep on uh, following the articles whenever they appear in the newspapers or other websites and keep enriching our notes. So, this is the speciality here at Tarun IAS. 
so you have to keep in mind suppose el nino is occurring uh, in this year but it actually get in intensified during the second year of its occurrence this is what the scientist has observed climatic records of el nino shows that it is not a recent phenomena uh, suppose UPSC wants to confuse you, so it might associate El Nino with say global warming or industrial revolution or release of this uh, uh, greenhouse gases, use of fossil fuels and all. No, El Nino is going on for millions of years on earth and we have records in ice cores, deep sea muds, corals, caves and tree rings. So this particular phenomena is very old, it is not of recent origin. Then again, there is also an opposite of the El Nino that is La Nina, that is the unusual cooling uh, of the water in the central and eastern tropical Pacific Ocean. Then some of the statement associated with these two particular phenomena, uh, which are very important from prelims point of view, El Nino occur more frequently than La Ninas. So you have to keep in mind. El Nino that is warming of the ocean this particular thing happens more frequently than La Nina's that is the cooling of the central and eastern part of the Pacific Ocean. La Nina events may last between 1 and 3 years unlike El Nino which usually lasts not more than a year. So this is a total opposite though El Nino occurs more frequently but La Nina this duration of the La Nina is more it lasts what it lasts between 1 to 3 years whereas El Nino usually lasts less than 18 months both phenomena tend to peak during the northern hemisphere winter so in these months they actually achieve their peak both El Nino and La Nina. So here examiner can confuse you that uh, El Nino because warming so they will peak in the summers. No, both these phenomena they peak during the northern hemisphere winter and not summers. So uh, we had explained how the air rises in different portions under normal condition you see there are there is colder water here air would be cold temperature of the air would be uh, less here the air is warmer so here the air will rise rising air will uh, result in condensation cloud formation rain on the this part of the pacific ocean again a branch of this air will come back and complete this cycle this is normal weather and this complete cycle is called walker circulation but under el nino phenomena this completely reverses now here the temperature is more the air uh, will rise in this particular side there will be rain in the northern or northwestern part of the south america there will be no rain or drought like condition in the northern and eastern part of the australia and southeast asian countries so this is a simple simply a simplified diagram of the of what we have understood in the discussed in the partic particular diagram in the slide before this particular slide. So uh, this is a bit complicated diagram but uh, because of we are the students of civil services we have to uh, understand this particular phenomena again same thing normal conditions or neutral conditions air uh, at the surface level air moves from uh, east to west here in uh, near Australia air rises above causes rain this again comes back and complete this circulation this particular branch this is actually subsiding near Madagascar under the normal conditions this is very important when we will understand the relationship between El Nino and Indian monsoon so this is the neutral condition in El Nino conditions this whole thing actually reverses instead of rising the air is subsiding here here instead of subsidence the air is rising la nina la nina is intensification of the usual normal condition air is rising now air is uh, more air is rising more rain is occurring here these branches are also intensified so everything under the normal condition it actually intensifies under la nina conditions uh, now what is southern oscillation see 
uh, to determine uh, what is hap actually happening on the ground, what scientists do. They have, uh, they have actually set up two, uh, you see, observing stations here. One is here uh, in the northern part of Australia that is called Darwin. One is here, uh, it is called Tahiti. So, they have established uh, pressure observing centers here. They observe the pressures at these two particular locations. Now, under normal conditions, you know, here there, there is an accumulation of warm water, air, temperature will also rise, it will move up. So, there is less air, so there would be uh, low pressure in this particular area. So, there will be high pressure here. So, under normal conditions, there will be uh, low pressure, high pressure. What will happen during the El Nino condition? The conditions will reverse. Under El Nino conditions, there will be high pressure here and there will be low pressure here under El Nino. So, you see there is a uh, fluctuation of the air pressure in these two particular places during normal condition and during El Nino. So, this, uh, this fluctuation is actually called sudden oscillation. Oscillation because air pressure is oscillating here, sometimes here more there than sometimes this at the, it is the air pressure is more at this particular location. Why sudden? Because these are areas are to the south of the equator. So, what is sudden oscillation? The oscillation of air pressure at these two particular places, these are Darwin and Tahiti. Why this is happening? This, because these are linked to El Nino phenomena. Under normal uh, circumstances, the air pressure is different and when there is El Nino, the same thing actually reverses. So, that is why this whole phenomena is also known as, you must have uh, uh, read this particular term ENSO, E-N-S-O, that is El Nino Southern Oscillation. So, the four terms were very important uh, in understanding of this particular uh, subject of geography, that is El Nino, La Nina, Vakal Circulation and uh, and so or simply Southern Oscillation and how these things are linked to each other. So, we have studied in this particular class. If you still have any doubt regarding any of these topics, you should mention your queries in the comment section. Now, a uh, very important thing. So, uh, that is the most important thing of this particular class, how El Nino is related to Indian monsoon. Now, see, we have studied a particular diagram. We had seen that under El Nino conditions, uh, okay, let's first see normal neutral conditions. What happens here in this part, in northern, uh, near the northern part of the Australia, air rises from this particular portion. Now, when this air rises, it accumulates somewhere in the atmosphere and it spreads outwards. One of its branch actually falls near Madagascar in the Indian Ocean. You know, uh, when this particular, this, uh, the, the monsoon occurs, one of the chief reason of occurrence of monsoon is that, if uh, this is India, then there is low pressure here and there is high pressure in the oceans. Air move from high pressure area to low pressure area. Thus, uh, the sun rays in the summer months causes this particular region to gain its uh, solar radiation, become very warm. The air in coming in contact with the warm surface, it also become warmer, it rises up in the atmosphere. So, here low pressure cre is created. This area, because it is under the influence of the ocean, the temperature does not fall much. So, there is comparatively higher pressure. So, air start moving from this particular portion towards the land. So, the greater the difference between this higher pressure and this lower pressure, there more and more uh, wind will flow towards the land area. So, you see, if they, this, uh, this particular branch falls near Madagascar, which is right, uh, you know, uh, uh, near this particular region, the, which is south of the equator. So, this particular region's higher pressure will further intensify and this will, this, the uh, difference between this higher pressure and low pressure will further increase. So, more wind will uh, move towards this land area. 
there is a lot of water uh, in this uh, in the course of this uh, this particular wind the, it will absorb moisture and ultimately these winds become the monsoon wind and cause rainfall over india now what happens during the el nino conditions during el nino condition there is no subsidence near this particular area that is uh, madagascar so here there will be high pressure no doubt but the high pressure will not be as high as under the influence of the la nina or even under the normal conditions so during el nino this higher pressure actually diminishes so that is how el nino actually results in weakening of the indian monsoon so i hope now you can explain the relationship between el nino and indian monsoon and how el nino is actually uh, associated negatively with the indian monsoon now let's see so this data is very important for prelims point of view it says an analysis of the rainfall records of the past 132 years what the uh, scientists have observed whenever there is a failure of the indian monsoon there must be an el nino phenomena associated with it you see with this information a very complex very important statements type assertion reason type question can be asked in the prelims examination so this particular data says whenever there is a failure of indian monsoon there must be an el nino phenomena behind this the failure of the monsoon but suppose there is an el nino phenomena going on so it is not necessary that in that particular year there will be failure of the indian monsoon if there is a failure of indian monsoon then the culprit must be el nino event but every el nino event uh, is not associated with the failure of the monsoon it might be the case that there is little or slight decrease in the amount of the monsoon or some other variations in the uh, uh, nature of the monsoon but el nino phenomena is not always associated with the failure of the monsoon but if there is a failure of the indian monsoon then the culprit in almost all the cases is this el nino phenomena that is rising in the temperature in the central and eastern part of the pacific ocean so uh, i have told you that one branch of the walker circulation actually subsides near madagascar when air is subsiding at a particular uh, place we we say that there is high uh, pressure area is being created at that particular region so this higher pressure region because of the subsidence of a branch of the walker circulation i hope you are connecting these topics this particular high pressure area is called mascarine high so uh, in 100 words a mains question can be asked how uh, like what is mascarine high and how it is related to the indian monsoon so we can say that mascarine high is a high pressure area near madagascar it is created because of subsidence of a branch of the walker circulation during normal conditions it aids in the formation of indian monsoon because it creates the it intensifies the difference between the high pressure area in the oceans and the lower pressure areas on the land however during el nino condition uh, the subsidence uh, is limited or there is no subsidence at all and there is no formation of mascarine high the intensity of this difference between high pressure and low pressure area between oceans and lands is not much so less or uh, um, uh, less the wind uh, the wind will flow from this high pressure area to low pressure area with less intensity so there will be less rainfall these are the usual condition when this happens so because this is happening in nature so there are lots of complications so uh, till now we have studied uh, four broad topics bro uh, like these are el nino la nina southern oscillation and walker circulation we have also seen how el nino is associated with indian monsoon but el nino is a global phenomena and it, and it is affecting the weather in different parts of the world in different ways so now uh, we will see the effects of el nino in other parts of the world 
in general warm el nino events are characterized by more tropical storms and hurricanes in the eastern pacific and a decrease in other parts like atlantic gulf of mexico and caribbean sea you see the formation of the tropical cyclones if you undergo the four or five condition required for the formation one is a uh, warm ocean water so here you can see that under el nino the warmer condition are shifting towards the eastern part of the pacific ocean and these conditions are warmer than the other parts because this is an unusual phenomena it is not a regular phenomena so that is why there is a shift or there is more occurrence of these tropical cyclones in the eastern pacific ocean than in the other pacific other parts of the other oceans then the location of tropical storms shift its eastward we have understood now uh, fully understood the why this actually thing happens because there is more temperature in the eastern part of the pacific ocean more air is evaporating so uh, a moist air which is rising and which is unstable these are the basic requirements for the formation of the tropical cyclones record rainfall often strikes peru chile and ecuador these are the countries in the southern america so when there is el nino air instead of rising towards uh, from this australian part it rises from this part that is why there are tremendous amount of rainfall in these countries under el nino conditions now fish catches offshore south america are typically lower because during el nino there is warmer water warmer water does not attract the fish colder water has lots of nutrients and it attracts fish so when there is el nino there is less fish catch in the uh, along the uh, western coast of the south america then some other effects strong el ninos are associated with above average precipitation in the southern tier of the united states from california to atlantic coast so this is an observation we are not going into the reason you have to keep this particular statement in mind indonesia northeastern south america tend towards the drier than normal conditions under el nino temperatures in australia and southeast asia run hotter than average under el nino el nino causes drought and heat waves in southern africa we this this particular thing was in news now you understand why uh, because el uh, you know there is a drought in south um, africa india southeast asia australia pacific islands and the canadian prairies so these are some of the observation during el nino years there is drought and less rainfall in these particular countries this you have to keep in mind so this was the uh, complete article besides uh, this this uh, article there are some terms which are often comes in the news so you don't get confused we have included these terms here in this particular class as well so what is el nino modoki or la nino modoki so it simply means that when uh, you know el nino means there is a uh, high temperature in the central and eastern pacific ocean when there is more higher temperature in the central portion instead of the eastern or western portion of the pacific ocean we say this phenomena is el nino modoki more temperature in the central portion than in the eastern or western similarly when there is more uh, colder water in the central part of the pacific ocean than the eastern or western under la nina condition then we we'll say it is la nina modoki so nothing special about these terms just in the central part of the pacific ocean if it is el nino there will be more temperature because of the more warmer water during la nina in the central portion there would be more cold water than the eastern or western parts of the pacific ocean then what is this particular thing triple dip la nina la nina generally occurs uh, say one year then again you know uh, there is a seesaw relation between el nino and la nina once el nino then it is followed by uh, some neutral years then again la nina then again this but if la nina happens 3 years continuously this particular phenomena is termed as triple dip la nina 
Lanina is happening three years continuously, consecutively. We say this particular La Nina is triple dip La Nina. This happened between 2020 and 2023. And this happening is a very rare event. It generally uh, doesn't happen like this. Uh, like there is La Nina, then there are neutral conditions for many years. Then again, El Nino, again neutral condition, again La Nina, something like this. But if La Nina happens three years continuously, we call it triple dip la nina there is and so uh, then there is a term and so spring barrier so this particular term is used uh, but it uh, what this term signifies is that it is often used to highlight the uncertainty in the outlook for the ENSO in the first half of the year. So scientists are unable to predict ENSO events during the first six months of the year. They don't know what type of El Nino will come, whether it will be you know, very intensified or it will be a milder, uh, milder version of the uh, El Nino. But after uh, the first half of the year, they get more signs and they can predict it more accurately. So this unpredictability of defining the uh, characteristics of the El Nino or La Nina event during the first six months of the year, this unpredictability is called ENSO spring barrier or spring predictability barrier. After the spring, the things become more clear and scientists can uh, predict more accurately uh, the characteristics of the El Nino or La Nina. So this is the term. So let's attempt one uh, MCQ on this particular topic. Let's uh, analyze what you have learned. Consider the following statements. Typically, El Nino occurs more frequently than La Nina. Is this statement is true or not? If it is incorrect, you should write the answer, the correct uh, statement in the comment section. Second, La Nina events usually last longer than El Nino events. Third statement is, while El Nino peaks in northern hemisphere summer, La Nina peaks in winter. El Nino means warming conditions. So are they associated with no summers or they are associated with winters? or if there is something else you have to decide if this statement is incorrect you should write the correct one la nina years is associated with more number of intense cyclones compared to the compared to the el nino years in northern indian ocean region so uh, this is an mcq with four statements you have to uh, you have to decide which statements are correct and which are not uh, this, this, uh, these options are wrong, so it should be a four statement uh, uh, answer. Uh, no problem, you should write whatever with the answer. One only, two only, so let's modify the options. One only, two only, or three only, or all four. So you should write whatever with the answer A, B, C, or D of this particular question. Uh, then what type of mains question can be asked from this particular uh, topic? Uh, we have created one uh, from this uh, subject, Salient Features of the World's Physical Geography. This is a part of your paper 1, uh, GS mains. So the question is, how does the El Nino phenomena influence weather anomalies, ocean temperatures and ecosystem disruptions? Ecosystem disruptions, less uh, fish on the uh, western coast of the South America during which phenomena so and what are the socio-economic implications of its occurrence you have to answer in 250 words you should include examples as many as possible from India so this is one of the questions keep reading newspapers keep reading uh, good websites and keep updating your knowledge and this particular article create your own questions see in the uh, especially in editorials what type of questions are being created by those who are writing those edi editorials those can be directly asked as questions in the paper in mains examination uh, this whole class this whole class is the whatever we have discussed will be provided in printer friendly notes like this uh, every diagram everything is uh, 
is available here but these are not the final notes so you keep reading improving your knowledge and keep updating these notes uh, by yourself that is how you will differentiate yourself from the lacks of other candidates so i hope there won't be any problem in understanding the terms uh, like el nino la nina walker circulation and Southern oscillation in future, you will feel confident whenever you come across such terms in the newspapers. So uh, again, we will come up with, with an informative video related to civil services examination. Keep watching Tarun IS YouTube channel. Thank you.